Good afternoon, this is Jeff with Sewer Tech Northwest. We're at 390 South 20th Avenue here in Cornelius, located on the left side of the house. That's as you look at the home from the street. That's how I describe everything. So we're, uh, you got this little row of hedges or holly, I don't know, I'm not sure what it is. Oh, never mind. There's just a few little pokey bushes anyway. The clean out is just on the other side of it. It's a little bit far out from the house uh, than the average sewer clean out is. Um, so it's one that you want to make sure it doesn't get covered up too much because these can be kind of tricky to hunt down if they get buried. And we're going to insert the camera and check the overall condition and serviceability of the sanitary sewer line. We're going to have water running here in just a moment. We're going to introduce water to the line from the exterior. And we're, we're coming in here right after a home inspection finished up. So tons and tons of water has been down this thing recently. All right, zeroed out here. And off we go. Right out of the gate, that is a spectacularly clean flow line. That is precisely how you want your sewer line to look. Here's the kind of people that look like they uh, lived with a septic system at one point. I, you, you very rarely see lines this clean. It's an unbelievable. And most notably, no grease buildup. That's the main thing. You obviously want to keep you know, the, the no-brainer stuff out of the line, wipes, paper towels. I include flushable wipes in that category. They are slightly less terrible than paper towels are. Um, the big one that a lot of households do not mind terribly well is cooking oil and grease. It's the number one thing that gunks your pipe up, and it is often the culprit that exacerbates uh, a lot of structural issues, bellies, offset joints, things like that, into actual problems. But it, it, it also makes the line, not that you should abuse your sewer line, I don't recommend doing that. When your line is clean like this, it handles abuse much nicer. So when the occasional paper towel does go down the line, it doesn't get stuck in a bunch of grease buildup and cause a backup. All right, we just swapped over there to cast iron pipe. And as we dropped in here, it looked like we belled out to four inch diameter pipe. I'll have to take another look at that on, as we come back out. But that's what it appeared to do. I think it's actually in the clean-out access of the line belt out. And then very quickly there, we went from 4-inch cast to 6-inch concrete. And again, so far, I haven't put any water down line. So the, the standing water we're, we're going through right now, we're getting a natural look at it. That is a very minor belly, especially as it, as it relates to how far it is from the house. If you're going to have a belly, this is where you want it to be, way the heck out from the house. And it's not a terribly significant one to begin with. But standing water at that distance, you, you need a very sizable belly when you start getting 70, 80, 90 feet away from the home uh, that can actually develop to the point of leading to a backup. And I'm going to introduce some water to the line here. Bear with me a moment. See a couple little bits of bark dust there. The clean out, I love to see stubbed up a little higher. It sits kind of down below ground level, not ideal. Makes it easy to, anyway, you probably can see a couple of pieces of bark dust. So right here, we have a joint that is showing some separation. We're going to revisit that here in just a moment. That joint there is relatively separated, although what I'm not seeing is a lot of really obvious signs it's open to the ground. Is a long line they're right there as we drop in that is the main connection i don't i'm not going to go completely over the top here there's a bunch of cobwebs sitting right in front of the main if i go through those i'm going to gack the camera lens up and we're going to have a, a really junky image the entire way back but that one foot in front of us is the connection to the main there at about 115 feet and there's our water flowing through there All right, we're going to go locate the camera head here while the line drains off, and then we'll pull back and take another look at everything. In fact, you know what I'm going to do here? 
this line's going to start, it'll be draining off here pretty quick. I'm going to kill two birds with one stone here, and as I pull back in, I'm going to locate, this will just verify that we are indeed going out to south 20th, um, but it'll also get a locate on where that join is at. Typically speaking, when you have a joint, I've been doing this for 13 years. I've cameraed over 20,000 sewer lines. Generally speaking, when a joint is separated to the point where it's open to the ground, you've got fairly obvious signs of it. You're going to have dirt clods sticking to the pipe joint, earthworms crawling around, things like that. I do not see a lot of obvious signs of that, although the joint is separated to the point where I would expect to see some signs of that. So it's kind of a tricky one. And we, we still have a little bit of water trickling to the line there. I'm going to move kind of slow here so we can see that. You've got this one here. about 103 feet. So when you look at the joint and back up and look at it, typically speaking, when a joint is open to the ground, the most obvious bonehead sign you're going to see is you're going to get a big dark ring around the pipe joint uh, where moisture is intruding the sewer line. Groundwater seeps in. And sewage can escape the sewer line too, but usually the, the, the easiest and first thing that occurs is groundwater seeps in um, because of hydraulic pressure. When you get ground saturated with water, the ground swells up, it, it creates pressure, and it forces stuff through the pipe joint. This joint, I can tell you right now, does it not appear to be gaping wide open to the ground. There's still overlap. You have a male-female uh, bell end here that they, they fit within each other. And they do allow for some slippage uh, without necessarily opening to the ground. And the one thing I don't know, as I haven't seen this line from its inception point, sometimes when a pipe gets put together, they don't butt the pipe ends up all the way together and they grout the joint shut. So it's possible you have a joint here that is indeed closed off to the ground and just is not um, pushed all the way together. And you, you see this with plastic pipe, concrete, any of them. So I'm gonna get it located here, see where this is at really quick and then we'll kind of go from there. All right, I got the camera head located. It looks like someone else has already located this once before. I'm not sure if there was a sale fail at some point, but um, I just remarked that same area. I'm getting a little bit different depth. Um, their depth is, is actually kind of catching it right in between. They're, they've written down four foot eight inches. Um, depending on the orientation, I'm getting five feet or four foot four. So four foot eight sounds like a pretty good spot in the middle there. And you'll see a green X marking <clears throat> as you walk out to the street. It's on the opposite side of the street. It's, you're getting pretty close to the street curb. Um, you know, it's, it's beyond the middle of the road. Let's put it that way. You'll see the green X out there. First and foremost, I'd contact the city, find out who's responsible for that part of the line. Um, I'm out here infrequently enough that I'm not sure in this part of town if the city is responsible or the homeowner. As far as flow goes, that is doing nothing as it sits right now to affect flow and functionality. Water shooting past it. And keep in mind, what I put down the line here was, was about five gallons of water with a bucket. Um, water shooting past it with little issue. I saw no water flow drop off or anything of the sort. Um, the joint, though, is separated enough that it could theoretically be open to the ground. When they get to that point, typically speaking, what you're going to see are signs of an open joint. But this one, I, I'm not seeing a lot. I'm not seeing dirt or anything of the sort. Um, jetted or cleaned beforehand, before the sale, but anyway. As far as repairs go, I wouldn't be messing around digging the road up there. The line still, has, by and large, has good slope and grade. Um, I would not even mess around with cracking the road open. I'd shoot an epoxy liner through there, seal the joint up, call it a day. To go and dig the road up there doesn't make sense, especially considering you've got good slope and grade there. And we're back to this little belly in the line. It starts here at about 71 feet. We'll push out to the middle of it here really quick. So about 71 to 78 feet here. At its worst point, you're, you're hovering between three quarters of an inch and an inch of standing water. Now where my typical breaking point is for belly repairs, where I start to consider them and or recommend them, 
is once you've got a five foot section of pipe with at least an inch of water that's static with no water running at all. Um, as you can see here, as we pull back to the belly, it's only just the middle of it where you even hit an inch where the water even gets over the camera lens. However, I only recommend repairs on bellies of that size when they are very close proximity to the home. This one is a great deal away from the house. At those distances, you have to abuse your sewer line. Just plain and simple, you will, you, it's almost impossible to develop a blockage and a backup from a belly that far from your house, especially one that's not terribly significant to begin with. If you could, you know, theoretically speaking, if you could get a, a blockage to develop there, you're having to fill up anywhere from 71 to 78 feet of pipe just to get back to the clean out. In doing so, you create an unbelievable amount of head pressure. That's the water weight sitting on the blockage. Um, as far as proper items go, toilet paper, things that are intended to go down your sewer line, um, there is just about nothing out there in that realm that could withstand that much head pressure without breaking loose long before that water ever got back to the house. So that, that belly where that's at is, is not concerning in the least. The only way to get a blockage and a backup from that distance uh, with a belly of that, that size there is just plain old using holes, things like that down the line and doing it on a consistent basis um, to ever get even close to a backup. And keep in mind too, you're in six inch pipe there. You're not in three inch, you're not, you know, it's large diameter. It's not stuff that backs up terribly easily unless you're just beating the heck out of this thing. So anyway, the separation there at 103 feet because of just the experience level that I have, generally speaking, joints that are separated to that extent usually are open to the ground to some extent. This was a harder one though because we just don't have the, the typical signs you see. So if you do end up doing a repair on that, I would look into doing an epoxy liner and just do it trenchlessly. Um, the only downside here is that you've got a three inch diameter clean out it's not four inch diameter. Typically speaking, you do need a four inch access point in order to run a liner through a six inch diameter pipe like that. So as we drop into here though, this thing looks like it's opening up about six inches down here. It, it, it looks like the line opens up to four inch pipe before you even drop into the top of the sewer line. So what you can probably do here if you went that route, I mean, you need to get a repair guy out here to come take a look and give a bid on it. But from what I can see here, it looks like about six inches in, this bells out. And if that's the case, you might be able to just dig down here about, you know, six, eight, ten inches and put a four inch access point on this thing and be able to put the liner through there. If no repairs are done, I would keep an eye on the pipe joint. I'd probably rescope this thing at about the one year mark. And, and ideally what you want to do is do it during the rainy time of year. When we get all dried out like this, and the ground dries out, some of the signs of separated joints can start disappearing. But usually that stuff doesn't just magically disappear. Uh, where, where if you get moisture intrusion, for instance, at the top of the sewer line, the water line never gets even close to that part of the, of the pipe unless a backup has occurred. And that's the only way you could ever get that stuff to wash away. Like sometimes you get separations in the flow line where stuff's coming through. It can be a little harder to catch it because the water flow constantly washes things away. But you know, you're seeing separation, you know, 360. But again, you know, if it's not repaired, keep an eye on it. I'd rescope it about one year. Try and pick the rainy season. That's going to give you your best chance of catching that joint if it's indeed open to the ground. You, you know, what you're going to start seeing is potentially water droplets dripping through the pipe joint, things like that, stuff that shows you it's opened up to the ground. If you do end up getting a repair on it, I would highly recommend rescoping the sewer line to check the work. It's very important to do that. So as we sit here today, again, I, it's not a joint I can guarantee is open to the ground. You know, we have, we have good flow all the way to the main lateral connection, very clean sewer line, uh, and a joint that I suspect, and I think someone else also that's been out here suspect that joint is opened up to the ground. That's why I recommend the repair on it. Um, you know, the, the concern you've got joints like that is you can end up developing standing water. And in this case, the only area in the line with standing water is an area that does not have separated pipe joints. Uh, but it, it can lead to hydro erosion if stuff is migrating through the pipe joints, dirt and groundwater. It can hydro erode the support out, out underneath the sewer line. 
um, slowly but surely over time, which at this point in time, that has not occurred. There's, a, there's essentially zero settling that's occurred there. It's, it, uh, there's a tiny bit of standing water, but it's, it's, it's extremely minor, if any at all. Most of it's just water caught between the, the gap and the pipe joint there. So from a flow standpoint, the line is functioning nicely at this time. Uh, it's not, you know, that, that particular part of the line there, I cannot guarantee is 100% watertight. That's why I'm recommending the fix. But, it, you know, especially being one that's kind of questionable, um, going to the effort of tearing the road apart to fix that does not make sense. The liner option is how I'd go here. Um, you know, I, I would look into see the feasibility on, on that. So, and for a, for a 115 foot sewer line, whoever installed this did a very nice job doing it. Um, most sewer lines that push over 100 feet very frequently, even if they're if they're two years old, um, nearly 100% of them will have a belly in them, and they're usually quite significant. You usually got inches of standing water for an extended uh, length of pipe here. So this was a nicely installed line.